Direct, and I'm here talking today. Well, we're going to be talking about everything Malabrigo, and I wanted to discuss some different ideas for making those hand painted yarns look even more beautiful. So, the first thing I wanted to talk about today is last week we had a drawing for the Clover Chibi darning needle set, and our winner was Mary Thomas Ford. Mary Thomas Ford, congratulations, you won last week's prize. You'll love this little container. I have one of these and I enjoy having my needles in here because I can see what's inside and it has a screw on lid and it's just terrifically handy. So you let us know what your address is so that we can ship your prize to you and we'll get that out in the mail. And the prize for this week is for Rios and it's, col it's called Chameleon and the colorway is 684 and it's for two skeins of Rios. This is super wash merino yarn that's quite lovely by Malabrigo. And it's hand painted as you can tell, it's beautiful. So all you have to do to enter to win the prize for this week is you have to let us know what you're knitting. Post pictures, show us your lovely items that you're knitting and or crocheting and um, then we will be entered to win. So you just go ahead and put, post those comments and then we can learn from you too because we love learning from all of you out there and I've gotten some great ideas on projects to knit and crochet. So I, I love hearing from all of you out there. And so that's the price for this week. And I wanted to give you just a close up idea of what I'm talking about when I'm saying um, things that I'm trying to avoid. So this was a picture that I found on Ravelry today and I don't know if you can show it. So what it's showing is it has, do you see the colorations, how it has a big spot on that one side of the blue? And um, I'm gonna give you some ideas of how you can keep this from happening so much and keep your projects looking lovely. Okay, the first idea that I had was maybe you could choose projects that use a couple of different colors of yarn. And I found this one here, it's called Brain Freeze by Stitcher Designs and it's found on Ravelry. Sure. And what I liked about this is, can you show it up front? They use two different colors of yarn and they t used a highly variegated color. Maybe something like this. So it's highly, um, you know, it has a lot of color in it. And then they used another complementary color with it to kind of just tone it down a little and where you might have some splotchiness because you're using uh, another yarn with it, it just shows up the beautiful part of the hand paint, not the um, uneven part of the hand paint. So anyways, that was one thought that I had. Oh, and I just wanted to show you. Okay, so when you order Malabrigo yarns, um, it may come in one bag and the bag may, it says all from the dye lot, same dye lot. And Jim, if, if you need me to take those out of there, I can. Yeah, that's cool. good idea, yeah. Okay, so I'll take them out of here and Jim can zoom up close up on them so you can see what I'm talking about. So when they say that your yarn is of the same dye lot, you can see how different it can be. Did you want me to yeah, lift move it, it back. up for you? Yeah, move it up. Back here? Yeah. Does that work? Yeah. You can see how different they can be. And so these differences can sometimes cause like a, a light spot in your work or maybe a dark spot of color somewhere. And so um, that's what we are trying to see if we can correct that problem. Here's a couple skeins of the colorway. Okay. And you can see, can you, can you see it like that? Yeah, Jim? that's better. So that's um, one colorway, okay? And this is one that's the exact same colorway. Hold them this way. D like that. Yeah, that's better. Okay. So do you see how they look different? So the idea that I was thinking and that I've used most often is to knit back and forth with one strand of yarn and then pick up the other strand and and knit back and forth with that one and every time you come to it you just drop your one that you were working on to the front and then pick up the other color from the back and then you'll have a lovely um, yarn and let me show you some samples that I knit up for you so 
In this first sample, we have uh, Malabrigo. Can you hold them and up? And I, I believe this is the Jupiter colorway. And this one has not, I did not alternate anything. It's just as it was. Okay. And the next one, I alternated. Every other row. It's kind of hard to see. I need to do like a huge swatch so you can see where you'll prevent the color I'll pooling of white colors. I'll put them together. can lay them down okay. and try to show them that And one. then this is one that was alternated colors and it was done in the round. That one was done in the round. Okay. And this is a lighter colorway of the same brand of yarn. Um, and that's what it might look like when it's in a cake. It's not highly... Uh, variegated. It's, it, it's not like this. It's just more tonal. It's more like these ones. So if you have Malabrigo socks. So if you wanted to do a project out of these more tonal colorways, this is Malabrigo sock and this is Malabrigo Rios, you would have less problems with pooling. So if you're doing a sweater for the first time and don't want to deal with the, um, you know, pooling that you might have, I would say go ahead and choose one of these less highly variegated yarns and it'll be easier to deal with than it would be if you chose one of these. Okay. However. Hey Kelly. Yeah? So Debbie doctor said hi and she wants hi, to. Hi good morning Debbie. She said you carry the yarn up the sides. Yes I do carry it up the sides. So um, when I was doing my first sample let's see if I can find it. Um. Can you hold those up, Mimi? Yeah. Hold both of them up so they can see. Yeah. I'm looking for the one where I carried it. Partially, I put the yarn in back on one and the yarn in front on the other. And this is the one where, okay, it must, oh, okay. So this, this strand right here. Hold it is, up, hi. This one right here was the one where I held every other round. And so in, on half of it, I, was, I took my yarn that when I was finished with the yarn, I would pull it behind my work and then grab the new one from the front. Okay, and, and it created this line right here. So the second half of it, what I decided to do, this part right here, what I decided to do is when I was done working, you know, knitting the back and forth with the one color, I just put it to the front instead of the back. And I think this was much more appealing look than this was. So I would say ha take your working yarn when you finish knitting, you knit one way and then knit back, then drop that in the front. And then you pick up your new color and you knit across and knit back and you drop that in the front and you keep picking the, the next color from the back. But um, I really think it did a good job that way. So that was um, pretty neat. But <clears throat> anyways, and then when, I'm in, when I do it in the round, say I'm casting on um, 50 stitches, for inst instance, and I'm going to do it in the round. What I would do is just cast on all 50 with one color. And then what I would do is I would knit 25 more stitches in that same, with the same strand of yarn, and then I would drop that on the other side. Not where my stitch marker at the beginning of the round was, but like maybe on the other side, it would be the other side of your sweater, so that you're not changing colors right where you're changing rounds. Because to me, it seems like one more thing to worry about, and it doesn't look as clean as if I put it over on the other side. Also, I forgot to remind you, when you guys are doing that in the round and you're picking up your new color and starting to knit with it, don't snug up the stitches because what you'll get is you'll get a nice, right where you are changing colors on either half of the um, yarn or what, if you're using two colors, um, it'll have a row of stitches that are tight. So really be conscious of that tension when you're doing it in the round, when you're um, changing those colors in the round because you, you don't want those tight stitches. You want your tension to remain the same. So keep that in mind when you're doing that. Karen um, says hi, and she loves Malabrigo yarn. Oh, awesome. Good morning, Karen. It's so nice to have you with us. It's wonderful knowing that you're all out here. Okay, and where are you from, Karen? We love hearing where you're from and what you're working on. So make sure to post it in, content, in comments because what happens is if you post in comments what you're working on and where you're from and what you're doing, then you have entered for a chance to win this lovely Rios in the chameleon colorway. 
or Malabrigo. So, and it's a Malabrigo yarn, superwash merino, by the way. Yeah. That means you can throw it in the washing machine and have lovely results. Karen's from New Orleans. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Congratulations. It's so nice to have you here with us. Okay, so I wanted to show you another bag, and this is Rios, and it's the Jupiter colorway. And this one, do you see how different, there's different variations in the bag? So when they, Malabrigo recommends that you <clears throat> alternate your skeins every other round for any of their hand painted yarns to make it look better. And I would say also when you're winding your uh, skeins into cakes, like say I'm going to wind this in, these two into cakes and use them, I'm going to knit uh, one set way and back and then I'm going to pick up the other strand, knit one way and back, the one of these cakes needs to be cut in half because what you don't want is you don't want all your ends to land in the same spot so you run out of yarn at the same time and then you have to use two whole new skeins what you want to do is cut one of them in half so there's always a strand of yarn that remains consistent and that'll make your sweater look better so just in case you didn't think of that that's a good little trick that I found out hey. and Yes, you share sir? some of the sweaters? That, sure. Yep. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to go through. I have some stuff piled up here from It's a Malabrigo trunk show that we have here. They were nice enough to send that to us. And this one is called, it's out of Rios, and it is the Playa Colorway 871. And what it is, is it drapey? It is a, okay. And you just drape it over the top of you. You see? It's, a little, it's kind of like a dress. So it's a little <laughs> big on you. But I think it's supposed to be a smaller. <laughs> but I do like Rios. Rios is quite lovely. Yeah. And this was cute. And so if we look at what they did on here, I'm sure they alternated every other row. And it was knit in different sides. So so this piece was knit a big long section this way and then they picked up and did the top. Hold up a little closer here. Closer see up here. how it was knit in a big long piece? Can you see that? Mm -hmm. And then they picked up for the top of the sweater mm -hmm. for the yoke. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. That's very pretty. Okay. And here's a nice way to use color. This one, what the Malarigo did, this one is um it's out of book number eight, and it's called Gapstow by Lori Steinberg. And what yarn are we using? Oh, this is Arroyo Sport. We don't carry that yarn. We have carried it in the past, and it's a really nice yarn. I have worked with it before. But what they did is they took one of a more highly variegated yarn and then just put little spots of garter stitch to break up those colorways. And you can see in here, like right in here, they have, you know, a little tiny bit, but it actually looks good because they broke it up with this, uh, these other colors, the purple and the pink in between. And I, I do like the lace detail on the edge too. So they did a good job with using their hand painted yarn on that and making that look nice. Okay, and here is an example of, with garter stitch, garter stitch is more forgiving than stockinette, it seems. If you have yarns that are <clears throat> hand painted and maybe lighter in some areas and darker in some areas, it still looks pretty good on garter stitch. So that's an idea for you to use garter stitch in projects and with the hand painted yarns and it, it tends to look lovely. <clears throat> now here they did some little bit of lace and some leaves. But still the different color the uh, different color variations actually look good in this project. I think it looks lovely. And this one, let's see what yarn they're using on this one. This is Rios and it's a sunset colorway. And that is out of book number five. But it's like a little, see? It's one of these type of things. I think it's pretty cute. Yeah, I like that. Well, I really like Al Malabrigo. Malabrigo for a worsted weight yarn that's 100% merino, the price point is really decent. And you know how I like price to be um, good. So now, here is another one. This is called a Mariposa colorway, and it's made out of Malabrigo worsted. And we do carry that on www.alpacadirect.com, and they use some cables and some lace. And the different color variations actually 
enhance the project, I think. Um, <clears throat> some people might say that the cables don't stand out as well because it's not a solid color, but I think this is pretty. I, I think there's definitely a, a place for this. This is gorgeous. There's a question, do we sell the books that you've been mentioning? Um, we do sell some of the books, and I went through all the books, and I tried to find which books were had um, quite a few really nice patterns in them for you to knit. And so the ones that we carry are book number 4, book number 14, and book number 13, which we are out of stock right now. Which one? Um, number 13, I believe, okay. is out, out of stock. But this is uh, book number 4 is... The Malabrigo book and then the Makita and Sock. Mm -hmm. You might want to mention so. they're on sale in the yard. Yes, store. and they're on sale right now, and the uh, yarns are on sale as well, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the yarns that are on sale today are our Rios, and then this is Rios, and it's a superwash merino. And if you haven't used Rios before, it's oh, it's such a nice yarn. And then Malabrigo Sock. Sock is wonderful, and these colorways that are not quite as variegated are really beautiful and easy to work with. So if you're beginning doing sweaters and what have you, and you want to try your hand at using hand-painted sock yarn, choose one that's not quite as variegated, and you won't have to worry about it. This is also Makita by Malabrigo, and a couple different colorways here. Very popular yarn. And they're Good asking what, what is that made out of? Makita. It is wool, it's merino as well, and it, it, it has 420 uh, yards, and it's, con it's considered a fingering weight yarn. Very nice, love that. Okay, and then I wanted to show you, this was just a couple of the Rios um, colorways that are a little more highly variegated. Really beautiful. You can pair these with um, a different, color, maybe a solid option, and um, it would look beautiful. Okay, so now, um, Jim, can you scan real quick on these yarns? These are a couple yarns from Rios, and they're less variegated. And I wanted to open them up so you could see what they like look like. So you can see there's not as much light and dark spots. You might want to hold them up just so they can. Vertically. And it's easier to work with these, especially if you're not used to working with hand-painted yarns. These more solid colorways are beautiful and easy to work with. Got it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're going to go back and look at a few more projects. Okay. And this one has a lot of cables on it. And this is from book number eight, and it's sock yarn. And it's called uh, Willow Dell by Way Wilkins. And I just thought that was really cute. Do you see how cute that is? Mm -hmm. And I bet you can't really tell if they alternated the colorways, but I don't think they did in this one. I think they just left it as is because I see some light colorations here. And with the cables and stuff, it kind of moves the yarn around a little bit. And so it's the, if you had a light area, it doesn't make it as noticeable. So that's always something to keep in mind. And I love this shawl right here. Oh dear. Dropping stuff on the floor. All right. Put that back up there. And this one is by Malabrigo. And it's Silky Merino. And it's in book number four. And oh dear. Um, it's Enrijado. Something like that. You'll see it. It's right on the front page of the book. But this, do you see how they use garter stitch and baubles? I mean, I have never seen that before, and it's so cute. It is so completely darling. Look how big that is. It's almost like you can use it on your couch for kind of a shoulder blanket. Why don't you show the book? Yes. And this is the, um, let me show you. See on the book on the front? That is the actual project. I think this is darling. I love it. Yes, very cool. All right, moving on here. So the next one that we're talking about today, this one was really cute. Um, it's Transado, 
and it's from book number four, and it's using Arroyo, which is the sport weight of, of Malabrigo, and we don't currently have any of that in stock, but we have carried it in the past. And this one is cute. It has this little um, cabling at the waist that kind of pulls it in a little bit. And I'm not gonna button it, but you can see how pretty it is. And I'm almost positive that they alternated the color. They did um, a round in each colorway of, you know, using two different skeins at a time. But it turned out really, it turned out cute. It does have a different, a few different colorations. Do you see how it has some light up here in the back? Maybe they didn't, um, maybe they didn't alternate it because if you look at this skein right here, it almost seems like it was dyed differently than that one. I'm not sure why they got so, it was so different up here than down here. And it, it looks okay. I prefer to try and eliminate that on my projects if I can. I think it just looks better. And a couple more, and we can go on and on because they brought us all kinds of lovely things. Okay, and this was kind of awesome. What they did here is using three different colorways, you can get these little, you know, highlighted pink lighter colorways in there. And it doesn't look like it's a flaw in the yarn or the dyeing. It actually enhances the overall project. And that was using three different colors. And if you look on the back, see those different colorways, how it's, um, you know, high and low uh, of the saturation of the color. And this one, right, I don't know about that right there. I don't know if I like that. I might have taken that out and um, woven in that end. But other than that, I really like it. And here's another one. They definitely alternated every other row with this one. And isn't that gorgeous? That's a beautiful chevron there, isn't it? Let's see what book this is out of. This is Arroyo as well. And... It is called Green Witch by Yoko Hada, and it's in book number two. But I thought um, this is beautiful. You can push push your like button if you like this one, because I sure like it. It's gorgeous. Love all the saturation of the colors, and I think that that Malbrigo Arroyo, the colorway that they used, was a perfect pairing of patterns and um, the yarn, and then knitting every other round. Now let me just look at my sheet and make sure I haven't missed anything. Let's make sure that we um, go ahead and press like and tell us what you're working on so you can enter for a chance to win the chameleon. It's two skeins of Rios, which is Superwash Merino, which I'm sure that everyone loves. And um, also, I wanted to say with pooling, sometimes when you're doing a hat or what have you and you do ribbing in one color and you don't alternate skeins or anything like that, you just use the hand-painted yarn to make a hat, for instance, the ribbing will um, pool differently than the actual top of the hat and you get some beautiful like waving colorations in hats and stuff like that. So using small uh, projects to get used for your hand painted yarns is quite lovely. So you can also give that a try. Um, and I wanted to make sure that Mary, uh, Mary Thomas Ford, let us know what your address is so you can enter, you can let, um, we can send this in the mail to you because you won the prize to, uh, last week. So, and for today, we have the chameleon. And I think that was about all I had to cover today. Um, just remember, let me show you again our um, work. I don't think you showed them these ones here. The, I didn't show them no, these not, ones? No, not those ones. Okay, so in this one right here was not alternating any skeins, not, not alternating the rows, okay? And this one right here, I knit back and forth with one strand of yarn from one cake, and then I knit back and forth from another strand from, from another cake of yarn. And that's what it looks like. And it'll actually prevent some of that pooling from happening. And I'll, I'll put it down if you put them next to each other. So yeah. See that. Yeah. And once again, this is what the yarn looked like. This is from a hand-painted local yarn. 
and that's what it looked like in the cake so and then so I think that's about it you guys have a great day and it's been wonderful sharing time with you and I will be talking to you next Tuesday we'll, when we will be talking about our favorite shawls that we love to knit so we'll be talking about our projects and I'll be showing you some things and what I like to do so I'll see you again next week take care